G'day everyone. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today, I'm gonna to be going through a walkthrough of my 701 and all the parts that I've put on it to turn it into what I think is an awesome, lightweight, long haul adventure bike. So one of the first things that I put on the motorcycle, the 701, uh, was to increase that fuel range. And I've gone with the Ray Garage uh, fuel tank, which is 5.9 uh, liters, which works out to be about 1.5 gallons. Uh, it works out to be about 50% more fuel capacity for the bike, getting a range of around 350 Ks, which equals to be about 220 miles. There's bigger options definitely out on the market to increase the range of this bike, but I just find that that 300 K mark is really suited to me getting into the remote parts. As soon as I start putting on bigger safari style tanks on the front here, it's sort of going to compromise the front of the bike a little bit with some weight distribution. Um, and if I need to carry more fuel, I'm happy just to run fuel bladders. With the auxiliary fuel tank being installed as well, you obviously have to remove the factory air box. So what Ray Garage have done as well, they've supplied that air box for you. Now, one of the other things I like to do with that foam filter, I like to put a twin air sock over the top of that filter, and I've found that it helps keeps the dust out. We have so much dust here in Australia, and uh, the long longevity for that uh, foam filter on big trips. Now, I also carry a spare filter, which packs down really, really small, and I chuck it in my kit if I'm going on a, a long haul trip, and I can just simply change that filter out midway through. Uh, the last thing that I've done for the fuel for the bike is I've changed over the fuel cap um, and I've put on a Vanash fuel cap on mine. So what that is fixed is two things. Um, the key sometimes gets stuck inside that fuel cap. So um, I've seen a couple of YouTube videos where they're actually being broken off. That's something I definitely don't want. So I've changed that out. And the other thing is too, it, the original uh, cap doesn't have much of a lip underneath. So a lot of dirt would get into the, into the actual fuel tank. So that's not good either. All right, so moving into protection on the bike. So the first thing that I've done, and I do this generally a lot on all my bikes when I first get them, because it's a really easy and basic one, is upgrade the handguards. Um, so I've gone with Bark Busters, and I've put the uh, VPS uh, guards on them, and I've put little razors on there just to flex a little bit of wind off your hands, particularly when it's cold, and maybe and also in the rain. Why I love the Bark Busters is they're just super, super strong. I've never had any issues, and I've dropped the bikes multiple times in really, really tough spots. And these things, generally the first thing to hit the ground, um, and I've never broken a clutch or brake lever, so highly recommend them. Moving down the side of the bike, I've gone with the Outback Motor Tech crash bars. And the reason why I've gone with these crash bars is I want to add a little bit more protection, particularly to the radiator. Just behind these plastics is that's where that radiator sits. So without that guard there, if the bike went down and a rock was sitting perfectly in that position, that would just crack the side of that casing of that radiator and that's game over. So I also have put a radiator guard on the front of the bike to protect the radiator for any of those small little objects that's going to get jammed in there as i said before if the radiator goes on this way out on a trip it can be really really difficult there is a couple of little patching methods you can use that's the one i've put on just to keep it protected um, and so far it's doing a great job so moving down to the skid plate at the bottom of the bike now i've gone with an axp racing skid plate now that's made from that eight mil thick plastic and it's that HDPE plastic and that weighs around 1.7 kilos. What I really like about the skid plate is it really eliminates a lot of those vibrations that you get through those traditional steel and metal metal plates. Um, one of the other things is too that's kind of weird when you're riding is that sound of stones flicking off the front tire and hitting hitting the skid plate, that big ding sound you hear. You don't get that anymore, so it's kind of kind of takes a little bit to get used to. Um, really, really strong. I've had it on for this whole time and haven't had an issue with it once. 
I've also wanted to add a little bit of extra protection to the side of the bike, particularly around the engine casing. So I've just gone with the triple clamp engine ca case covers. Um, that's just there. Once again, if you hit a rock in the right spot, they can crack those casing covers. So with these on there, hopefully it just adds that little bit extra protection. What I'll also do is I'll carry um, some proxy resin um, in my spare kit, just in case we do have an issue with any of the sump or, or parts of the motor that could leak oil and seal them up with that. So I like to protect the ABS sensors on the bikes. Um, this one comes with an ABS sensor on the front and the rear. So I've gone with the Nomad ABS guard. Now, these are great ways to just stop sticks um, from getting into those cables and pulling those out and disabling your ABS out the bush. So any extra precautions I can put in place, I'll do it. And that's why I put those on. When I first got the bike, I kept burning my motorcycle pants on the left-hand side because the exhaust pipe just sticks out that little bit. So I've just put on the uh, Wings carbon fiber exhaust pipe heat guards, um, and they do a fantastic job. And they also look really, really nice too on the side. I love that carbon fiber finish on them. All right, so with the 701 being a thumping single cylinder, all 75 horsepower, that comes with some vibrations. And those vibrations come up the handlebars. So what I've done is I've just chucked on some uh, universal handbar grips, which is the Grip Puppies, and they're fantastic. And that just adds a little bit of cushioning uh, for my hands on that long journey trips and takes a little bit of that vibration out. One thing they also do is they keep your handlebar grips uh, protected so you're not going to wear them out and these can be replaced quite easy. I think they only cost about 30 to 40 bucks. You'll see these on a lot of adventure bikes. I'm going to say 90% of adventure bikes go with these and that's the double take mirrors. Uh, they're fantastic and they're not that expensive. For the ergonomics, I've added in some bar raises. So I've gone up 30 millimeters and that just adds a little bit more height. For me, I'm six foot three, so I need a little bit more height out of the bars what i've also done is i've chucked on that scott steering dampener it is a really good steering dampener it ain't cheap um, nor is the vanash uh, bar riser kit but with the steering dampener on uh, it just makes this bike so so good uh, particularly and, and on the highway too in the wind it just takes a little bit of that juddering out uh, moving into some more of the ergonomics, more into comforts. Now, I've gone and upgraded the stock seat uh, to a seat concepts. Now, I've gone with a Comfort XL, and I really, really love this seat. Now, seat concepts, I think, are the king. You'll see these on, on I think they make a seat for nearly every adventure bike now. And the good thing about this, the XL, uh, comfort seat. It's just a little bit wider for your butt to sit on, so therefore you've got a bit more cushioning, um, and therefore you can you can stay in the saddle for a lot longer. Now, from ergonomics too, I've changed the shift lever, and I've gone with a hammerhead shift lever. And the reason why I've gone with a hammerhead, you can customize the length of those levers, and particularly if you've got a bigger foot, you can get them in sizes up to like 15 or 16, I think. So heading down to my brake lever. Now I've upgraded my brake lever to a Vanash brake lever. It's a little bit stronger. Also, again, I can change the distance for my, my larger boot as well. So I've gone with larger aluminium foot pegs and they're from Ray Garage. They work really well together, those two. I've had to play around with them to really find that sweet spot. The other reason why I upgraded that uh, brake pedal is the, the stock one, my boot kept slipping off it. So I've just gone with a bit of a wider shoe for the brake pedal and so my foot can grab it and um, I really enjoy it. It's great. It's also going to save me if two, I drop the bike on that side it's not going to snap off last bit of ergonomics which i love another australian company is the steg pegs these things are fantastic where the steg pegs come into their own um, is particularly when i'm in the high country and i'm doing those really really long climbs you can lock your boots up against these and it takes a lot of the pressure off your arms the other place where they come in handy is in the desert in the sand it just relieves that pressure of you just hanging on um, and you can really set yourself in so i highly recommend steg pegs doesn't matter about the 701 on any adventure bike if you're going into more technical terrain these things are fantastic Alrighty, so luggage. With any great adventure, you've got to carry a lot of that equipment. Um, so the luggage that I've gone for my main carrying is the Moscow Moto uh, Rackless 80, and these are the V3s. These have been fantastic. Um, if you don't want to run a racked system, these are fantastic and easy to install 
locked and obviously these have been designed uh, with a 701 in mind so you can get access to that ref uh, fuel filler cap just by popping off the uh, beaver tail and pulling off this top bag you can fill the bike up it has a really good weight distribution um, also too if you don't want racks on your bikes um, these are fantastic obviously the name rack the reckless that's where that comes from and I can fit all my kit in there, all my camping gear, all my food for multiple days. One of the things um, that you probably just need to be mindful of with, with these bags is this, this side strap that goes to the heel guard. That can shear off. I've cut one already in half and that was just from my boot rubbing against it on, a, on a, maybe a two or 300k trip. So I've got a couple of spare of those um, up my sleeve. Now the customer service for Moscow Motor is fantastic. You can buy these on the website. I got mine through warranty because it was the first trip and they snapped. So with the Moscow Moto bags, there i've upgraded the top rack and i've installed a perun moto top rack and i've also put an extension plate on it which really is suited to this bag and it gives some really really good um, tie down options um, so you can lock this bag down really tight so the other bags that i've got on the bike is my endurastan now this is the endurastan sandstorm 4x and this is the small bag uh, this is fantastic this what i use this bag for is my quick go-to's uh, particularly camera gear for all the filming that I do um, out in the bush a lot of the batteries sit in here and I've got that quick changeover I can also store my drone in there as well um, haven't had any issues with this bag it's really good it's kept everything dry um, and they're uh, they make some good stuff the other bag I've put on is my handlebar bag. Now the handlebar bag that I've gone with is the Giant Loop Zigzag and it's a great little bag. Uh, the only thing I will say about it is it is not waterproof. It's got a light water resistance but you get a big downpour of rain that's going to get wet so just obviously be mindful if you do go with that bag uh, and it does rain it ain't going to keep your stuff waterproof. So the other bag I use is on the front of the bike which is the Endurastan um, bag, the fender, fender bag. Now that's a great spot that I put a spare tyre tube for my front tyre and a couple of little tools in there as well. And what that does is that just frees up a spot where that tyre tube would originally be in the back of these bags. Don't put too much weight on my fender. Obviously you don't want to snap that fender off, but just with one tube and a couple of tools there, haven't had any issues now. I've been running that fender bag on there for about three or four trips now and it's fantastic. Alrighty, so performance wise on the bike, I haven't done that much because you don't really need to. This thing is an absolute weapon. As soon as you get it off road, it'll scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you're not hanging on. So, and a lot of people have done this modification, that, and that is the, the original exhaust pipe, pretty much a paperweight, throw that thing in the bin, it weighs six kilos, it has the cat in it, it creates an enormous amount of heat, um, particularly if you're going to run these bags, the actual website says to change the exhaust off because that, that pipe creates so much heat. And the exhaust that I've gone with is just the Wings titanium exhaust, fantastic, uh, got good little bark. You've also got options too with that exhaust if you don't like um, loud exhaust you can put um, baffles in there as well which they sell on their website um, to decrease the sound uh, I don't want to drop 1200 bucks on the exhaust because I'm just going to trash it I've just changed my front sprocket to a 14 tooth sprocket now the reason why I've gone a 14 tooth on the front is I wanted to drop that gearing just down a smidge particularly when I go take on some technical climbs I just want to have a little bit more in my rev range I've also found too now that the bike in second gear is beautiful in the bush and it just powers up stuff as before I was running in that first gear and really stringing it out just so I could keep my momentum and keep the revs up. The other performance part that I've done to the 701 and I recommend um, not just the 701 but all adventure bikes, get your suspension professionally tuned. Now I had my suspension professionally tuned down in Geelong by Chad's Off-Road. Now he's put stiffer springs in the front and obviously a stiffer spring in the rear and then he's matched that set up to my weight with my gear weight and the difference is phenomenal. It's given me and the bike so much more confidence off-road and I highly recommend it. Yes, it is a little bit pricey, but it's an investment well worth it. So I've upgraded uh, my front headlight. The stock headlight on the 701 isn't really up to par, particularly when you're riding at night. So I've just gone and put a Cyclops LED headlight. And the reason why I've gone the Cyclops, it's only around 100 bucks, and the performance you get out of it is really, really good. They're all, the other reason why I didn't upgrade the headlight completely is because I still don't know if I'm going to go down that rally tower route. Right now, after 10 months of riding, I'm 
really don't need the rally tower. I'm quite comfortable with my setup. I don't mind a bit of wind. But now over the journey, if I do decide to go down that path, I know I haven't dropped a buttload of cash on a new headlight. So it's only that 100 bucks. And the performance you get out of those Cyclops headlights is really, really good. Now, the next thing I've put on the bike is I've just put on a tachometer. Now, this is the Buretech Compan. These guys produce these straight out of Germany. Really easy to get imported. They're not that expensive. Now, the reason why I put that tachometer on the bike is I just wanted to see the engine temperature and also the ambient temperature with some of those places that I travel to, particularly in colder climates. Um, I want to just be able to gear and it helps me gauge what I'm wearing and where I'm at at camp. Um, so it also gives me that data from the bike as well. Uh, I've also added an extra USB charger to the bike. Now I've wired that directly to the battery and the reason why I've done that is because this has got a volt meter on it and I've got an on and off switch on the front of this. So great way for me to see what the volts of the bike are doing. Um, so far this one, I've just, I just grabbed this one off eBay. It's relatively cheap. The, the handlebars on the bike hasn't vibrated, killed it yet. I know previous ones I've put on, <laughs> they haven't lasted, but this one's lasted a really long time. So it's great. Um, and the reason why I've added the extra USB is just because I've got to charge all this camera equipment when you're out on the road. So tire wise, um, I've still got the stock TKC80 on the front. I'm just waiting for that to burn down. Um, I've only put 5,000 Ks on the bike, so that's still got a little bit of life left in it. I haven't found that tire to be too bad, but I definitely won't be putting the TKC80 back on when I go to replace it. Definitely be going along more the lines of an 80 off-road, 20 road uh, style tire. Um, and you know, there's so many options out on the market. On the rear of the bike, I've put on the Motoz Adventure Tractionator. Now, that's a fantastic tyre. Uh, I've been running that over winter, and particularly on that last trip where, we, where Dan and myself got into some real heavy clay, he was running the Dunlop 606s, and this tyre was just keeping up plenty of grip, just as much as that Dunlop. So I highly recommend the Tractionator. It's a great tyre. Ah, there was one, one other thing I needed to tell you. That's it check out this trip it's going to be plenty of motivation in that trip for you to get your mates together get your bike loaded up and get out there and enjoy it be sure to check out the rest of the content on the channel hit the like and subscribe button it helps me out immensely and i will see you next time cheers Yoo.